everyone how are you well it's time for a new video and today we're going to be right reading an article about the I think she's like some kind of students union gay rights activist from Oxford who recently resigned from every single post that you could possibly think of that she's a part of because she did non-consensual drunken sex or to the layman among us uh, that is known as rape so Without further ado, let's read this article and let's get stuck into it. Oxford student activist Annie Tariba resigns after admitting to sex act that was not consensual. So rape. The history and politics student says she is committed to transformation as she highlights the steps she will be putting into place in order to address the situation. Also admitting to a similar incident occurring two years ago. You see, it's only the stupid red bricks and the posh universities that have all this bloody political correctness. My history course was not like that at all, I'll have you know. So, oh, and I didn't do politics, so maybe that's why she's a little bit. <whistles> anyway, let's continue. A prominent Oxford student activist has announced she is to step down from an array of political posts and high profile campaigns after admitting she failed to obtain full consent before having sex at a conference earlier this year. According to the independent student newspaper of Oxford University, Cherwell, and the student union publication, The Oxford Student, Annie Tariba took to her Facebook profile, which has since been deleted, to release a statement detailing how she became involved with someone at the National Union of Students and US Black Students Conference in May, only for the other party to later inform her the sex had not been consensual. Now, <laughs> oh, oh dear, oh dear, Annie, 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 where to start? Isn't it funny that <laughs> uh, all the men in the atheist community and other communities, especially gaming communities, when we have sex at conferences, you know, it's all like, oh my god, this is terrible, men shouldn't be doing this to women, how much of this was consensual, none of it was rapes everywhere, sexual harassment. But when she does this, it's an unfortunate mistake. It's non-consensual. She will learn from this. She won't go to jail. And there won't be no elevator gate. Will there, you know? I mean, <laughs> they later informed her that the sex was non-consensual. Wow. Did, I don't know. Who did she have sex with? Because she's part of... She's an equality officer. And then she's like a gay rights activist. Is she a lesbian? Is she bi? Is she straight? I don't know. Because guys don't tend to withdraw consent. But it's interesting that this has happened to a social justice warrior. Sherwell says Miss Tariba is a third year student at one of Oxford College's Wadden. She's a miss at 20. I thought a miss was after you've been married. Can someone please explain to me? Because there used to be miss and misses and now there's a miss. I thought a miss was some, something that happened after marriage. What, she dumped a boyfriend and now she's a miss? I don't know. Just wondering. As well as this, she was people of colour and racial equality officer at Wadham Student Union. Oh, fuck off. Oh, that fucking word. I am sick of that phrase, people of colour. She was people of colour and racial equality officer. That doesn't even make sense. People of colour and racial equality. Just put her down as the equality officer. I don't need someone representing me. I'm fine with myself. I, I didn't even once you know, talk to the NUS and unless they were trying to get elected. And I, I only, I, I actually abstained most of the time. Well, that's just me. <laughs> and the editor of No Heterox, uh, it's described as a, z a zine for queer and trans voices. I don't know what heterox star star means, but I assume that is a jab at heterosexuals and that she's queer as, as, as we put as they put it isn't it funny are those prejudiced people the ones who 
who often consider themselves to be for equality nowadays, isn't it? She has apparently also stepped down as a member of both the National Campaign Against Fees and Cuts, NCAFC National Committee, and the NUS Black Students Committee as well, so her involvement with Oxford's anti-racism hashtag Roads Must Fall movement, which has been gathering pace in recent months. I don't know what that is, but Rhodes is an island in the Mediterranean. How dare you attack these people? What have they done to you? <laughs> you see what I mean, guys? I don't know what Rhodes is, unless it's a person. But, you know what? Maybe that's a subject for another video, if I ever get around to researching that. So, basically, this is a person who's a massive social justice warrior, campaigns with all this shit, you know, like, probably, you know, you know, it agrees that men must be taught not to rape, yet is a rapist. And, you know, they've not got to the meat of the story yet, it's just a load of waffle, but it's odd that, <laughs> that this person happens to be the subject. And I'm, I'm sick of all these divisive committees. In, this, in 2015, do we really need a black student's committee anymore? Do we really need something for... Asian people, there's nothing for white people, and there's certainly nothing for mixed race people. I never had a mixed race society at university, I never saw one. And NUS, well, they're useless. A bunch of posh cunts that claim to represent me, they don't represent me. And here we go, they describe this. In the statement, she acknowledged how a similar incident occurred while she was a drunk in, cl in a club in her first year and highlights a number of steps she'll be taking on to show how she is committed to transformation, including help with alcohol consumption and organisations that deal specifically with sexual violence. Jesus Christ, it's like a punishment is self-flagellation in the media and a load of groveling and apologies. You know, nobody is arresting her. I want to know who she had sex with. I want to know the gender of the person. Because why the hell was she not fucking reported? You don't go tell the person who raped you that it was non-consensual and let her change. What the fuck? You, you get these people in trouble. You arrest them. They raped you. They, they broke the law. What kind of world are these people living in? And this is the statement. And I will read it to you now. Uh, this statement explains why I'll be stepping back from political campaigning from now. I thought you mean from now on. But never mind. I owe you a proper explanation, so we'll go into details here which you may find triggering! Oh my god! She has a fucking trigger warning! A trigger fucking warning in this statement! Out of all fucking things! Oh my god! People are just getting more sensitive to the point of ridiculousness. At this year's NUS Black Students Conference, I had sex with someone. No, you didn't have sex with them, you raped them, but never mind. The other party later informed me that the sex was not consensual. I failed to properly establish consent before every act. I apologise sincerely and profoundly for my actions. Wait, so... Let me get this straight. Maybe you're not quite a rapist. Or maybe you are, I don't know. Because you, you had to ask for fucking... For consent for every act? What, so from fingering or hand jobs, I don't know the gender, by the way. I mean, I am assuming she is of the LGBT persuasion. I am assuming, because she's part of the whole thing. They've not said who this person is, so, you know. I, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, say both acts, because I don't know. So she could be giving the guy a hand job, and so she should be saying, Can I give you a hand job? And he'll be like, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, can I give you a, a fingering? Oh, yes, please. Uh, may I stick this dildo in your vagina? Yes, please. May uh, may may I get on top of you, sir? Yes, please. That is stupid. That must be the worst sex possible. Just the fact that you guys are having sexual contact is consent enough. That's what it was when I first had sex. The only thing I needed to ask is if they were okay, if they were getting hurt or something, because, you know... It was both our first time, so I had to ask that question and hope. And then it's all about communication, not just constant asking for consent, but never mind. One must wonder if these people actually do have sex, because that's not how normal people have sex. Anyway, let's. I digress. Let's continue. <laughs> I should have taken sufficient steps to ensure that everything I did was consensual. 
I should have been more attentive to the person's body language in failing to clarify that the person sent it to our entire encounter. I have caused serious irreparable harm. So, basically you two were having sex, but this person didn't consent to every act that you did. To me, I don't know. Either you're lying and you're saying you're trying to sugarcoat it and make it look like it's not right, or this person is another social justice warrior and they're one of those who says you have to, you know, ask for consent for every little thing that you do. But I'm erring on the side that you're just, it's just damage control and self flagellation at this point. In a separate incident in my first year of university, I was alerted to my inappropriate behaviour whilst drunk in a club where I touched somebody in a sexual manner without their consent. Therefore, this is not an isolated in incident. I apologise sincerely and profoundly for my actions. Now, this is you. This is you, isn't it? This is you. You have the problem. You may, you probably are a bit of a sexual predator now, aren't you, in a, in a way? You're a serial groper. And, you know, being drunk is not an excuse. You're making excuses for yourself. There are no excuses. You groped someone without their consent. You had sex with someone without their consent. Although whether or not that... Is, you're telling the truth about this whole matter is another story entirely. And yet, we are to believe that you will transform yourself. You didn't transform yourself after that event, did you? You didn't think, oh, I did something wrong. I better watch what I drink. It only takes this in the news for you to change. You know, the fact that it can actually harm your career as a potential politician. I'm not surprised. You sound very disingenuous here. With these incidents, I have rightly lost the trust of those who I organise with and fully intend to work to ensure that I put both my politics into practice in my personal relations and to Putin that I'm committed to transformation. Jesus Christ, just are you going to change as a person? Transformation implies you're going to go through the Ludovico thing, you know, in, in a... a fucking a clockwork orange they're gonna sit you in front of a cinema keep your eyes open for ages put drops in it as you watch all these silly like images and they will teach you not to have sex or non-consensual sex whatever it is so you be like grow mm, person's ass ah! like that you know Watch that movie if you don't get it all right guys in order to ensure the safety of others I will be taking a number of steps one I breached NUS's safe spaces policy so will not be attending future NUS events. Good, you're a harm to people. 2. I am resigning from all the political positions I hold, from NCAFC's National Committee and from the NUS's Black Students Committee and as editor of No Heterox Zine. Which again just sounds so fucking prejudiced. If I said no homo rocks, would that not be bad? I don't know. And as the people of colour and racial equality officer at Wadham SU Oxford. Good. I'm surprised they even fucking, you know, put you in those positions in the first place. Three, I will be stepping back from prominent campaigning in other forums, including Roads Must Fall and RS21. Now I know what Roads for Must Fall is. It's basically what I get rid of a, uh, a statue of Cecil Rhodes. He was a colonial in Rhodesia. Despite the fact he's an important historical figure, but never mind, you know political correctness. 4. I commit to getting help with how I consume alcohol. It is clear that I lack self-awareness, that's an understatement, and become sexually entitled when I'm drunk. So you're as bad as all the fucking cis-het white guys who you hate so much. It's obvious that you're the type of, you're the type of person who would attack white people, or attack men in general, for being entitled, because you're a feminist, we can see that. Yet you are the very person you fight. <laughs> and it's not when you're drunk. I don't I think this is just an excuse. I think you are sexually entitled. You are a sexually entitled person and you're get and you're now getting your comeuppance and just saying, Oh, it's just a drink. How do we know it's just a drink? How do we know you do this sober? We can't trust you, like you said. This does not excuse my actions. Well, you're trying to excuse yourself by saying you're drunk. I am wholly responsible for the damage that I have caused. Five, I commit to educating myself properly about consent by reading zines and other materials which have kind of been made available to me. You need to go to a fucking consent class. That's what you need to do. Join all those other guys. You know what it is anyway, but are forced to do it. Six, I commit to seeking help 
from perpetrator organizations. For example, I have taken steps to establish contact with respect and will be seeking out organizations who specifically deal with sexual violence. I am deeply sorry for the hurt I caused. Yours, Annie. To read, but it should be yours respectfully, but you've not got respect, so I can see why. You see, this is the problem, people. She should be arrested. She committed a crime. She has basically admitted that she has, she has broken the law. You're not supposed to grope people without the consent. You can get on the register for that, but she's gotten away with it because she's a woman. And she's all these things and all that. I wouldn't get away with that, and I'm a person of colour. I'm a man. I've got a dick. That's not going to stop them from like, you know what? I could plead, but I'm a mixed race. I'm I'm a victim. The judge would look at me and go, you look white to me. Or you could say, that is not an excuse. You're a man and you should know better. You know? This woman's getting away with it. She gets therapy while we get sent to jail. We get sent to mandatory fucking consent classes. But let's continue with this fucking story. Along with women's campaign officer Stephanie Kelly, the autonomous political group within Oxford University Student Union, or USU, the women's campaign, WOMCAM, issued the Independent with a statement commenting on how, in their opinion, Ms. Tariba's announcement was rife with apologism, which she does not condone, adding out sexual assault, especially at university, is one of the most underreported crimes. No, it's not. There is no evidence to suggest it is either underreported or overreported, but they're right that it is rife with apologism. She is apologising. I, I don't necessarily mean that, oh, she's sorry. She doesn't feel sorry. She's sorry, but not sorry. She is an, a rape apologist in many ways. Oh, I will transform myself. I will flagellate myself. Oh, look, I'm, I'm clearly changing. Oh, psh, and you wonder why I... Uh, started the Monty Python clip at the beginning. One cam statement in full. The women's campaign stands behind and believes all survivors of sexual assault and violence, whether or not the incident moves through the courts. Believing and supporting survivors who make the incredible brave step of sharing that traumatic experience is the first step towards justice. Actually, no, we cannot believe them. Otherwise, we cannot prove the crime. We have to be sceptical, but we, we have to trust them, not believe them. There is a difference, but... Let's continue. The next is exercising abusers and those who enable them from spaces that should be safe for all. I agree, we should be throwing all these people in jail, no matter who they are, male or female or trans. Rape apologism manifests in infinite forms. I can agree with that. We define it as any discourse that refers to sexual assault as anything other than what it is, unacceptable and appalling abuse. The statement as above is unfortunately rife with apologism and we do not condone it, nor the violence it describes. I have nothing but full agree agreement with that. I think that's absolutely fine. WOMCAM is committed to ensuring that liberation spaces remain abuser-free, unless you're a male, but they did say that they, you know, want to trust everyone. But there's no way that I could go to them and seek help because they don't have the resources, you know? Without our full-hearted commitment to this cause, we have no business campaigning on women's issues. Any institution that protects abusers at the expense of survivors' well-being is one that must be dismantled and reformed. I wouldn't go that far, but it certainly needs reforming, I guess. Moreover, sexual assault is one of the most underreported crimes, especially at universities. Citation needed. Holding those responsible for sexual violence accountable means acknowledging the terrifying fact that violence against women is deeply ingrained in and normalised in our culture. No, it's not. Citation needed. If anything, it's more normalised against men. Than women. Men get far more convictions than women in and um, longer sentences in crime. Bar none. It is not accepted. In fact, paedophiles and rapists are treated worse in jails. But you know, never mind. Education about the issues, campaigning for the rights of those affected. Their rights are not being, you know, abused in any way. But never mind. And continued vigilance about the behaviour we do not condone in our organisation is the way forward. I like that statement. It was full of the usual social justice claptrap, but at least they're taking a stance and saying that this is not acceptable. This woman should probably be in jail. I, I absolutely agree with that. In most, it, I, I agree with most of it. And the sad fact of the matter is she's not going to be charged because according to the law, rape is penetration. She didn't penetrate technically because she's a woman. 
even though it says you can use your hands or your ob or objects. So technically, she should be, you know, taken to court. But whoever this person is, and I have a distinct feeling that it may have been a man, because I don't know. I've 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 had I I don't want to go anecdotal, but I might have to. Men don't really report this shit. They just don't. They don't report this because no one would believe them. But then again, it could have been a woman because otherwise, why would this victim be believed in the first place? And she did admit it. If it was a man, she should just say he did it or it was consensual. Who knows? I have an inkling it may have been the man, but who knows? Let's continue and finish this article off. Mr. Eber could not be immediately reached for comment, <laughs> and the representative for Wadham said the college is unable to comment on the matter. Well, it seems that she knows that she's guilty. It's obvious. Well, she admitted that she was guilty, but no amount of apologism or, you know, excuses is going to stop her from, you know, looking any worse than she already is. Non-consensual drunken sex, though. <laughs> Fucking hell. That is rape. It is rape. From what she described. There was a, a little bit of a hint that it may or may not have been. But I think that was probably not. I think that was her making excuses. She clearly had sex with this person without their consent. But the fact that this person told them when they should have just gone to the police is amazing. But, you know, my digress. Anyway, this has been Charming Man 93. Like, share the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all later.